everybody welcome back to my channel and to another video in this one I'm going to be working on another watercolor landscape but in this video I'm going to be focusing more on explaining the techniques that I use and why I am using those particular techniques for each step of the watercolor landscape so that you can choose the perfect techniques to use for each part of your landscape that you're painting no matter what that landscape is now just before we start I want to let you guys know about my first class that I've uploaded to Skillshare and this is on painting a simple watercolour landscape and it's targeted for beginners that are new to painting with watercolours. So this is the first ever class I've put on Skillshare and it is a 40 minute class broken down into 8 lessons. So it goes through all of the materials and colours you'll need for the project and for watercolour painting and then it takes you through the painting process process step by step so that you can recreate it yourself. I also include a full list of the materials that I use and I explain how I choose the materials to use for the project and I also include the resources like the reference and a sketch outline. So if you are already a member on Skillshare then you can get access to this class now and I'll leave a link at the top of the description to the class but if you aren't already a member of Skillshare then you can use that link it's a referral link and when you click on that you can get two months free of Skillshare where you can watch this class and also access all of the other classes on Skillshare for free. So I recommend checking that out and follow me on there so that you don't miss any future classes that I upload. Now let's get straight into the video. Here you can see the reference image that I'll be using for today's landscape painting. I love this one because it had loads of different elements in it. I liked the sky and the water and then the hills in the foreground and I thought it'd be great to paint and it had a lot of detail in it. So the first technique that I decided to use in this painting was actually masking fluid for the water. For those of you that have never heard of masking fluid, what it basically does is you apply it to the paper before you paint and it preserves any highlights so that when you add watercolour to the paper, it can't get onto these areas. And so you can do all of your layers of watercolour to that area and then when it's dry, you can peel off the masking fluid and those highlights remain bright and it still remains the white of the paper. So you can choose this technique if you ever have any really bright highlights in your landscape that you'll think it'll be really hard to paint around and preserve. So that is where you can use masking fluid in your landscapes for any bright highlights. Now I'm going to start to paint the sky and whenever I paint a sky when I'm doing landscapes I always use the wet in wet technique. So this is where you pre-wet the surface of the paper with clean water and then tap on all of your other watercolours on top. And this is a great technique if you don't want any harsh edges when you're trying to mix lots of colours together. So if you want different colours to nicely bleed into each other and get a really soft look, then I recommend using the wet in wet technique. I love using it for things like the sky in a landscape, but if you're doing something like a portrait, this is the perfect technique for doing skin. So the wet in wet technique is used whenever you are painting an area where you don't want harsh edges and you're trying to mix lots of colours together and get them to softly blend into each other. I also like to use it on the sky if I've got any areas that I also want to leave white. You can see that with the sky that I painted, I've left a lot of highlights showing through, a lot of the white to the paper. And it's really easy to do that when you use the wet and wet technique because you're just wetting the paper with clean water and then you're just tapping in the other colours where you want them. So you can easily avoid adding paint to the areas you want to keep white and you don't have any harsh edges, it still looks really nice and natural. Now I've moved on to painting the sand and I'm still kind of using the wet in wet technique but I did one thing differently here. Before I used clean water on the sky for the wet in wet technique to pre-wet the paper Whereas with the sand, I knew there was no areas that were stark white. So instead, I added a base wash of really light yellowy brown that matched the lightest colour of the sand. And then I used that wet base layer and tapped in the shadows so they still bled into each other because the paper was still wet. But I applied a base layer 
of a light yellow brown color instead of just clean water. And so I add a base layer. If there's not any really white areas in that particular area of the painting that I want to preserve. And I definitely think that wet in wet painting is one of my favorite techniques that I like to use for my watercolor works because it gives everything such a natural look. And a lot of the time, color transitions are more soft and subtle and it's really easy to accomplish this with the wet in wet technique. Now I'm working on the fieldy mountains in the background. And again, I applied a light base wash of green to that area because again there was no really white areas that I wanted to preserve and I'm actually using a layering process when building up the paint on the mountains and I like to use this process if I'm painting something that's really dark I don't like to go in with really dark paint straight away so I kind of do a really light uh, base layer and then build up more layers to gradually get it to that really dark value that it needs to be because with watercolors it's easier to darken something up whereas it's harder to remove the watercolor if you have gone a bit too dark. So if there's an element of a landscape that's really dark I use layers working from light to dark to gradually get it to the the value that it needs to be. So now I'm working on the water and I pretty much just applied a base layer of really bright aqua color down on the water. And now I'm going in with a darker blue and I'm using the wet on wet method because that previous layer is still wet to tap in the shadows and I'm going horizontally to give the look of waves. And because our masking fluid is already down on this area, we don't have to worry about preserving all of the little highlights on the frothy waves of the water. When we let this layer dry, we can just use a cloth to peel off the masking fluid and those highlights will remain intact. And that's why I love using masking fluid for highlights because it's just so easy and you don't have to worry about painting around any little details. And you can get masking fluid in a pen or in a bottle and it's fairly cheap and it lasts you for a very long time. You can see now I've waited for that layer to dry and I'm just removing the masking fluid using an old tea towel that I have because I find that this is the most effective way of getting off all of the little bits of masking fluid. You can use your finger but I find that it hurts my finger a bit more, it tends to rub up your finger and it's just a lot easier with a cloth like this that's got a bit of texture to it. And as you can see those highlights have nicely been preserved. So another technique that I want to talk about that I use a lot, I'm not using it right now, but I will be using it in a minute, is the wet on dry technique. So this is where you want to add details to your work. If you're ever trying to add details to your landscape, like bits of grass or you're painting in trees that you want to be really crisp. So if ever in your landscape, you've got a detail that you want to be crisp and in focus, you'll want to use the wet on dry technique. And this is where your previous layers of watercolor are nice and dry, your paper is dry, and you're just using that wet paint and painting on these details. And this is great if you want your details to be nice and sharp. If you're trying to paint in little details, little blades of grass, when your previous layers of watercolor are already wet, then those details are just gonna bleed out and blend out and be very fuzzy looking. So if you ever wanna paint details, it's very important that you leave your painting to dry before adding these in. For example, now I'm painting in little bushes and foliage on that field and hill in the foreground. But the previous layers and base layers of green that I added to that hill have already dried. So now I can go in with that sponge to add in the foliage or with a detailed paintbrush to add in these little blades of grass. And you can see that those details are really nice and crisp because the previous layers of watercolor aren't wet so they can't bleed out. So the wet in dry technique is something that I use a lot in my landscape as well. And I use this a lot for the details in the foreground. More in the distance, you can't really see as many details because those objects are further away from you. So I recommend using this technique to add details in the foreground for the elements of the landscape that are closest to you.
And another technique I love to use is that sponge. I just use a section of an old washing up sponge and that is a great way to add foliage. So that is another technique that I regularly use in my landscape paintings is a old sponge to create foliage texture on trees or bushes or little bits of blossom on your trees. So one technique that I am going to use right at the end of this painting is gouache. Now you don't have to use this technique if you're not a fan of using mixed media on your piece, but I like to mix in a tiny bit of gouache with my watercolours just to add some brighter highlights because watercolours themselves are very translucent and it's hard to paint lighter colours over the top of darker shadows and darker watercolours. So what I do is I just mix a tiny bit of white gouache in with some green watercolour and it makes it really easy to paint highlighted details to your work. So you can use this technique if you feel like you need to add some lighter details over the top of darker areas of watercolour. I'm particularly using this to add blazer grass onto that hill and it's important to have highlights so that your painting has contrast. You can also just use white gouache to add in little highlights onto the water if you don't have masking fluid but you have something like white gouache or white acrylic then you can use this to paint in little highlights in the waves afterwards. And so this is the final painting. I really hope you enjoyed learning about those couple of techniques. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this, where I don't necessarily talk about the painting I'm doing, but more about the techniques and my reasoning behind why I use those techniques. Now, if you would like to see how I created this painting in real time and follow along with me and learn even more tips and tricks, then I have got this painting as well as over 300 other real time tutorials available over on my Patreon, not just for watercolours, but for charcoal, coloured pencil, pastel and much more. For just a small amount per month, you can unlock all of those tutorials or if you're just interested in focusing on one medium or you're not interested in a monthly membership then over on my website I've got individual courses for specific mediums and subject matters that you can get for a one-off payment and learn all of the techniques that you need to master your specific chosen medium. So I've got a few watercolour classes on there that you can check out and I'll leave a link to them as well in the description below. If you are interested in any of my courses, then you can get 15% off by using the code SAVE15 at checkout. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.